chapter of this series um, as we reflect here today with members of our staff um, and talk and reflect with them. Um, so I guess one question I would have for all of you is, as a leader, what sticks out to you as you personally experienced these events? I can share from my experience of being church secretary. So I'm the first person that people see when they walk in the door. So that day when the special agents arrived, I happened to be the only person in the building um, at that point, which was kind of a lonely feeling um, as to what was coming next. Uh, they quickly said who they were and that they needed access to one of our um, staff offices, needed to take a couple of things. and. In my mind, I'm trying to process if they're legitimate. Uh, mm -hmm. um, what do I do with this? They showed me their badge quickly, but even as I'm escorting them back the hallway and unlocking the doors, I'm still thinking that I just let some strangers in. And, um, so I was processing that. I soon found out though that they were talking with um, my former colleague on the, on the phone. I could tell they were speaking with him, so I realized that I think they are legitimate. Um, at that point, I had no reason to suspect uh, him of any wrongdoing whatsoever. That was the furthest thing from my mind. Um, but I did make a couple false conclusions, uh, assumptions. I assumed that um, he must have been a victim or he was helping aid an investigation of possibly one of our youth or other staff members um, may have been a victim. So that's where my mind was going. I also assumed since he knew what was going on, other people in the leadership knew as well. So that's the reason I didn't share what happened. I felt this is very confidential. Um, surely somebody will let me know when I need to know, if I ever need to know uh, what happened. It's probably none of my business, maybe. Um, so I went home, wrestled with that all evening afternoon, and decided that if I don't hear anything from uh, leadership by the morning, I will let someone know what happened. Um, so I wasn't surprised that evening around 9 o'clock, I think it was, uh, when Brian called me. I uh, wasn't surprised to hear from him. Of course, completely shocked as to what um, he said had transpired that day. Um, also surprised that he had only, within the minutes before, had found out uh, for the first time. So that had me second guessing uh, some of my steps earlier in the day, um, things I would have maybe done differently had I known that nobody else knew what was going on. Um, but I think I acted on what little I knew at the time. That's, that's how I reacted. I can talk to that too, Abby. Um, I work very closely with the former pastor of student ministries, walked through a lot of hard stuff, and uh, it hit me like a ton of bricks, I guess. Um, the first thing is denial, like somebody's got this wrong, this can't be happening. Uh, then it's, well, what's this mean for the church? Where do we go from here? What do we do? I remember telling our kids that night that what has happened and the rest of our family and then being in a state of shock as well and then not sleeping well that night and just being in complete kind of loss of words and wondering how something like this could happen. And uh, then the next day, just uh, kind of not being able to even function quite right, just found myself coming over here to church and sitting down with everyone else. <laughs> and uh, that just felt like a safe place to be for me, just to process things and, and to work through things. So it really, for somebody who worked closely with him, it really hit me pretty hard. And uh, I was in denial for a while and then what to do. So it really shook me up. You know, as, as a leadership team, I mean, I, as I reflect on all this um, and how I believe we grew together through this, this really difficult experience, and yet they don't teach you this stuff in seminary um, or any kind of classes that I've ever participated in. But a question I would have is, how did you as leaders, how did you feel equipped for this journey? Yeah, that's a great question, Brian. I don't, I don't think that you ever feel equipped for something like this. I know I certainly didn't, and, and you're right. You don't. You don't learn this stuff in seminary, but if you've been around the church for long enough, you know that these things do happen. And my first sense was this is a this is a huge explosion. I mean, it's just the ripple effects mm -hmm. are enormous. And so 
what gave me the greatest confidence is, is this team right here and knowing that we were going to be sitting down and processing this. And uh, it's the co cohesiveness of the pastoral team and the congregation, knowing the heart of the congregation, that gave me the greatest feeling of, I think, I think God is going to carry us through this. But um, feeling equipped was not, um, not something I felt myself, but feeling a connectedness with one another is what, um, what I did sense. Um, I think nothing could have equipped me for what I was going to encounter that day. Uh, nothing could have prepared me ahead of time. Um, did I feel equipped later? Absolutely. Um, the speed at which the leadership and the elders put together a statement for our website was um, incredible. So the next morning, uh, the next day when it hit the press and calls started coming in to the phone that I would be answering, I knew exactly what, what to say. We had, we had a statement and I didn't have to um, figure anything else out. I could just simply say that and I was um, so thankful that that happened as quickly uh, as it did. So as you reflect back on the last months um, since this all unfolded, um, <coughs> what, what would you say was a significant moment for, for you in your re as you reflect? Yeah, I would say the most significant moment that I can remember, uh, Brian, would be um, when I had to tell my kids that night. Um, that was a significant moment, mm -hmm. no doubt. It definitely uh, impacted our family a lot. And I think it, at that point, I didn't realize how much it impacted everyone else's family, too. And it kind of hit me over the next couple of days. But it really impacted our, our family significantly. And when I realized that, I was like, wow, this is, this is a big deal. And we don't know how this is going to turn out. That was a big moment for me. Yeah, I think for me, the, the um most significant moment that stands out through that whole time was the, the following day when, uh, when we needed some information from our um, former pastor of student ministries, uh, access to uh, passwords, and um, I mean this happened so suddenly and, and all of a sudden he's removed but ministry and life has to go on and, and we had to be very careful how we went forward, and, and so um, he was not allowed to come on the property, and um, there were things that he needed out of his office, and, and so we had made arrangements to meet in the parking lot and um, exchange those those items that he needed out of his office in exchange for, for passwords and other information. That moment, it, <coughs> so much had changed in just 24 hours. The mm -hmm. day prior, we were colleagues in ministry and, and friends and, 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 and shared very easily and the awkwardness of that moment is what will stay with me. I, to this day, I, you know, I just wanted to cry with him and, and, mm -hmm. and hug him as a brother, and yet there's this, this thing that happened and it just made everything very, very awkward. Um, that moment um, stands out to me. I think, Abby, for me, what stood out was everything that transpired prior with the, the emails from Brian and everything that was happening seemed surreal to me. Like the next day when we were all gathered here and we started talking about the media reaction, mm -hmm. it just hit me kind of between the eyes like, this is real. Mm -hmm. This is going to go down and this is, this is for real. That's what yeah. So in the midst of all of these moments and all that was experienced over these past several months, how, what sticks out to you is ways that you were cared for in your, as you led in your different ways? Yeah, I would say, well, we learned of the, we learned of the news on Monday night. Um, we Pastor Brian sent an email and um, I felt cared for through the process in that he kept us he kept us informed of what next steps would be. Um, but then there were several, uh, several key points 
um, immediately after what happened that I felt cared for in that the following morning we had our Tuesday morning men's prayer time um, and of course Brian shared it as a prayer request there we had a bunch of older men with us who were willing to intercede and then that same afternoon we got together as a leadership team for a 2.15 p.m. debrief um, and planning and what, what our next steps going to be, how do we handle this, and so that just felt very good. Um, and then probably the most significant thing for me was the Wednesday night prayer vigil that we then had um, where conference leaders came on site and we as a congregation community gathered to pray and for each other and for healing. Yeah, that was that was probably the most significant moment that I felt cared for through the process. I think for me, uh, Rod did a great job of, of explaining how he felt cared for, and I would end exactly the same way with what you did with our with our prayer meeting. And I remember the songs that I led. I just remember the outpouring of support from our congregation. I just I, we talked about. It. We had no idea if there was going to be a few people. If there was going to I mean, the, the, the sanctuary was basically full and it just felt so cared for uh, in that moment as well. So just like Rod said. Thank you all for the perspectives that you bring in your various roles and um, different ways that you experienced and felt cared for in these times. And yeah, thank you. And we hope that you will join us again for our next chapter. In the